um, that we have made provision for um, to incorporate actually every every ISO within within our our um, our discussions, and uh, we will be be addressing um, the various deliverables within every every ISO. So the web the webinar guidelines. I want to to ask you to please mute your microphone, and then um, I am going to switch off my uh, my video as well to make sure that that we've got good streaming for everybody. I know that, that we've got people from from Botswana and from all over the world um, attending as well. And then let let me please finish uh, the presentation. It will take about 50 minutes. And then um, if you've got got questions, please go to your your Zoom chat box that is at the bottom of your your screen. Um, list your question there, and we have got Leon that is going to be making sure that that all the questions are answered. Um, and we will make provision for that for the last 10 to 15 minutes. And then the, the webinar shall, um, shall be recorded and uh, this will be placed on, on um, our YouTube channel. It will also be on, on our website if you want to go there um, and it shall be made available as soon as possible um, later today. So let, let, us, let us start with, with our the process itself, I just want to go and get my pointer right here. So if, 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 if looking at the table of contents, we are going to be speaking about who is Crest Advisor Africa, just to give you a snapshot of who we are, um, what is um, strategic objectives, also what is, what is objectives? Firstly, what is the, the difference between goals and objectives? And then smart metrics framework, what do we speak about that? Uh, and what does it mean? The operational objectives, operational objectives in practice, that we will be addressing and uh, the athletic system. If we have got time, we will we will just give you a snapshot on, on that and then our, our endorsements and freebies. And then if there's any questions, we will we will um, we will address the questions. So who is Crest Advisor Africa? Just to just to give you a, a snapshot of what we are doing is that um, we have been established in 2000 in, uh, the 13th of June 2014. So we are over six years old. Um, or must I say young, and we are, we are specifically focusing on corporate governance. So we are working with enterprise risk management. We are working with business continuity, compliance management, um, health and safety, and we are certified globally um, in 17 other management systems. And we, we, I want to, to address this, this logo or badge that we've got here on the right hand side. We are um, a professional we are a platinum partner of, of the Professional Evaluation Certification Board that is based in Canada. So if we are speaking about enterprise risk management, business continuity, compliance management, we are actually certified to implement, to audit and to certify companies uh, globally in 150 countries um, under the brand of the PCB. So that is for us extremely valuable. Um, in Globally, um, out of the 1,929, uh, part, um, accredited partners with the PCB. We are number 23 out of, I think, 29 platinum partners. So it is it is a fairly niche niche market and 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 a very prestigious um, accolade that we've got there. So if you're looking at um, at what what is what is our 10 offerings, Crest is working specifically. Um, with 10 offerings. So, so we, we are doing training um, that, that is within the ISO scope, also with our, um, uh, the, quali uh, the qualifications authority. Um, we are doing training there. Um, advisory services, we are working across, across disciplines, across verticals in a business, uh, from enterprise risk to supply chain, um, um, from medical schemes to aviation authorities. We're doing audits, audits on a, on a broad base, internal audits, risk-based audits, um, independent audits, your customer audits, um, supplier audits, we're doing that as well. Products, we've got a great range of products. You can go and look at, at our um, website. One of the products that I want to explain to you here is our management system toolkits. So this is, this is one of our niche environments um, where we have got, um, 
um, toolkits that we have already developed for the 17 standards that we are accredited in and um, any framework within the, the ISO scope, uh, the toolkit is actually giving you the speed of implementation that you don't have at all um, um, without a toolkit. So we can actually save you 80% of your, of your spend um, in the, the implementation um, of ISO standards. Our technology, you can see here at the, at the bottom right, we've got a system with the name of Isolytics. It is actually an abbreviation of ISO Analytics. So we are actually analyzing companies um, uh, in terms of the ISO standards, whether you've got, you've got three, four, five, six, seven standards, it doesn't matter. We've got a combined assurance model that we have, we have pre-populated our system with all the requirements of um, the specific ISOs and we can measure um, every requirement, every shell that you've got in, in, the, um, in the standard. We can measure that on a broad range of measurements. Um, so that is actually helping us now at the moment where we cannot actually have face-to-face -face audits, that we can actually have remote audits um, that we have been approved for and we are using our system. So incubation is actually, we are, we are working here with, with um, business coaching, exec executive coaching, business rescue as well. And we are um, assisting companies to turn around and to have um, a, a corrective strategy in actually um, working with their business and to have a return on investment there. Um, cyber forensics, cyber forensics is, is for us the future in, in, in the, in, in business as cyber forensics can, um, is anything from your cell phone and especially now from, with working from home, what is the, what is the critical environments that you are going to be, to be losing control over that people are actually working from home now? Working from home, people, people doesn't have um, uh, APNs. Uh, the APNs can, cannot, cannot, um, cannot be used fully because there's, there's, there's a limited number of them. Their cell phones are at risk. They, their actual working space is at risk um, at home. So how do you address that? And so we, we are doing in this space information security and we are doing digital forensics. Then we've got our international certification um, as offering number eight. So we are certifying companies, we're certifying um, uh, management systems, we are certifying products, we, we're certifying trainers, auditors, um, and we are also certifying people as lead implementers and lead auditors within a, a specific standard. Then we have um, two, two new, new products that we have um, included in the last, last um, six weeks. So this is our engineering services. So very important that, um, that this whole ISO space is actually based on, um, on how do you develop and how do you structure your, 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 mechanical, your mechanical, your electrical and project management environments in terms of engineering. We, um, myself has been um, involved in, in one, of, one of the biggest projects globally uh, for about seven, eight years, um, and 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 this is actually making for us the um, a very good offering to our um, to our clients. Our extended footprint. I just want to explain to you here. We we have been um, fortunate or blessed that um, we have been um, m merging with one of uh, with an international company that has got. Um, a footprint in 32 uh, countries globally with our footprint in South Africa, Botswana, uh, Namibia, as well as we are, we, we, we're looking at the moment at uh, Mauritius as well, that we have got uh, in total an extended footprint of, of over 34 countries that we, that we are, are working in. And all these dots here is actually our regional offices that we have got access to. So, what is objectives? What is the critical, strategic, tactical, and operational objectives that you need to be need to be cognizant of and that you need to be working with? Now, I just want to want to start with with a simple question. If we're looking at at objective, how do you describe an objective? And usually, when we have got um, training classes, people has got long abbreviated and 
long-winded answers on objectives. And actually, an, an objective is achieving a specific outcome. That is as simple as that. So what is your, what is your outcome that you want to, to achieve? So if you want, to, want to, 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 to move from London to Paris, you've got a few options that you can use. You can, you can fly there, you can drive there, you can use a ferry um, over the English Channel, or you can actually use the Eurorail. So which one is the fastest, which one is the most economical, and which one is the, is the most safe, safest one? So if you're looking, looking at, at those three options, um, you can very easily um, determine what is my objective. I need to go to Paris. The outcome there is I need to arrive in Paris, safe and sound. So that is a simple, the simple definition of objectives. Now, if you're looking at objectives in a business environment, you are looking at the simple, small word that is saying risk. Now, if you're looking at the definition of risk, risk is the effect of uncertainty on objectives. So if you have got an objective that you want to, to travel between London and Paris, then you need to go and determine what creates for you uncertainty in reaching your objective. What is the effect of uncertainty in reaching your objective? And if you take that definition and you turn it, turn it into a positive, because you've got actually two negative words here, effect and uncertainty. Effect is the, the sky can fall on my head and, and, and then we've got um, blue caps on. Uh, really? We, we are looking here at how do I create certainty in driving performance? And this is why objectives and performance are so very close to each other, because you have to have measurables to make sure that your objectives are always performing, because that is actually driving your mission and vision of your company. So if looking at your objectives, objectives can have different aspects, such as, as financial objective, health and safety objectives, environmental objectives, and can apply at different levels, such as as a strategic level, organization-wide level, project level, product level, and process level. So if you're looking at strategic, strategic objective, strategic objectives are statements that indicate what is critical or important in your organizational strategy. Very important there, because if your company cannot, cannot determine what is critical or important in your organizational strategy, then there's something wrong with your objectives. If your objectives is written in, in, a, in, a, in a way that you cannot measure it, there's something wrong with your objectives. And then you are always going to have this, this um, confusion in your workforce that what is actually our objectives? If your objectives are, are simple and straightforward and measurable, and we will get to that, the SMART um, principle. If you're looking at that, then you've got a simplistic objectives that people can understand from the highest level, the exco level and the board level to the lowest level where you're working with your, your operational people. So in other words, their goals um, you're trying to achieve in a certain period of time. And that is usually in, in a period of three to five years. So strategic is longer than tactical and operational. So you need to have a strategic objective. Firstly, I'm, I, am, I am looking at um, five years um, initially, but then from three years, you need to be looking at, do we change and what do we actually adapt um, on our strategic objectives? And your objectives link out to your, to your measures and initiatives. Now, if you're looking at, at the difference between goals and objectives. You will see that a goal is a broad primary outcome. Back again, it is an outcome. So it is back again to your objectives. A strategy is the approach you take to achieve a goal. And, the, and an objective is a measurable step to take, um, you take to achieve a strategy. So each one of these are actually intricately um, aligned with each other at a tactic is a tool you use in pursuing an objective associated with the strategy. So if we are looking at, at the smart methodology and, and we will get to that, you, you, you are usually getting a smart um, objective, or you can say that I've got a so smart objective, then your objectives or, or yeah, yes, your objectives isn't actually aligned with your strategic objectives. So if you're looking at your, at your objectives, you always need to look at 
what is my strategic objective for the company and what is my um, uh, tactical, operational and divisional objectives? How do I align with the strategic objectives of the company? Now, um, and all of these are actually linking in with your aims and, and goals, your vision and your mission. And you can, you can see that is actually strategic management that was brought in in here. So if you're looking what, at what is the difference between a goal and an objective. Firstly, on a strategic level, we are looking at, so, so sorry, on a tactical level, I, I just want to go here at the, on the right hand side, is the immediate short term desired result um, of a given activity, task or mission. If you're looking at a tactical objective, are usually entrusted to, to the lower position management in the three tier organization um, structured or field or front desk, middle and executive management or operational, tactical and top management. So if you're looking at the strategic and tactical objectives, I'm going to, to go through the strategic objectives first. So if you're looking at strategic objectives, it is focused on long term, three to five years. It is set by the board. So Exco is actually working with the board. They are developing um, the, the objectives and it is signed off and approved by the board. Thirdly, it is um, involving higher risk and uncertainty because you, you, are, you are sitting with a longer period that you, can, that you are working with. And if we, if, if we are looking at, um, at, at even objectives that, 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 that any of us had for the last, um, and it was established in January, I can guarantee you nobody has actually foreseen COVID and that we are still in, in a COVID space where we are in a pandemic space where we are sitting in lockdown. So your, your risk and uncertainty can change anytime. Then we're talking about like, likely to involve significant investment or business resources. This is why it is about three to five years because you don't have as a business um, um, infinite resources. You've, you, you've got resources that needs to be spent well and you need to, to make sure that your, that your CAPEX and that your OPEX expenditure are actually balanced within your, 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 your financial environment because this is your financial objectives. How do you actually work that your company is, is working effectively? How do you work that your company is, is having a return on investment? And how do you work that your company is actually making profit? And then difficult to change in, in, in the short term, because usually you've got a long term, a three to five years um, objectives here. And what can change is possibly on your tactical level and your operational level. And then it is stretching and challenging. So you need to actually put yourself in a, in a space where you, you are stretching yourself, your business, where you are actually looking at continuous improvement and where you are actually working with a, with, with a space where, um, sorry guys, I just want to, want to look here. We, we've got some, some disturbance here. I just want to, to switch that off quickly. Okay, so it's done. So we can, we can go wait. So you need to actually put yourself out, out there to say next year, I want to have a 10% um, increase in in our profits or um, a 15 percent or or a 20 percent or have a new revenue stream that that you um, are going to be implementing because to to implement a new revenue stream in your business there's a lot of preparation to be done because you need to have a business plan you need to have your your strategic objectives correctly um, that new revenue stream need to be described correctly, your business plan need, need to be in place and everything that you are doing with, with, with that space need to be project management every day. So if you're looking at the tactical side, we are focused on the short term. The short term can be 18 months, 18 months to about two years, to about three years set by the line management. So line management is actually, your middle management is actually a key to this environment because they must link up to what the board and the executive committee has actually set out as the strategic objectives for the company. You need to be aligning with that. If we're looking at a reference in, in, in ISO, we are looking at leadership. Leadership is a critical environment um, for um, within the ISO space. And that is actually clause five. So clause five is, is speaking about how do you set 
objectives that is aligned with your strategic objectives and that your objectives is actually driving your company. And this is where in all your ISOs that we, uh, your international standards that we are speaking about, we are speaking about a risk-based thinking. Now risk-based thinking is not about the risk. It is about chasing and achieving your, your objectives and making sure that everything that you've got that is, that has to do with your, um, something that can affect or create uncertainty that you have that that you are actually managing that so on a tactical level the risk is is fairly low you have got limited resources um, that is now invested in it because your bigger resource structure is actually in your in your um, your strategic um, objectives and it is fairly easy to to change at minor financial cost you can fairly easy change the flow of, of, of your business, of your, of your business unit with little cost and it is realistic and achievable. Now, if you're looking at, looking at this, this is where you, where you know, I am going to have in this production line of mine, bottling X, Y, and, uh, um, a certain kind of, um, let's talk about liquor because liquor is actually uh, a big contentious and cigarettes is a big contentious um, subject. But if you're looking at how can I reach my, my objectives realistically and achieving it, we need to know how many bottles can this plant actually um, put out on a daily basis per hour, per week. And do we, do we optimize that? And this is, this is fairly close. If you're looking, looking at this, this is extremely close to project management PM Bock, and it is also very, very close to the Six Sigma um, processes that we are also offering here. So, just want to go to the next next slide. If you're looking at at the smart metrics and framework, smart, I think all of you know exactly what it what it means. So I have I have introduced so smart and smart. So if you're looking at smart, it is firstly, it is specific, it is measurable, it is attainable or achievable, it is relevant, and it is time bound. So actually, it is all of these are working with from the perspective of we are we are driving a budget, we are driving um, a project, we we are driving everything to make sure that that we've got a specific focus that we've got a specific, a, a specific outcome, that it is measurable. We can measure it in, in centimeters. We can measure it in, in weight. We can measure it in distance. We can measure it in anything that you, that you've got there, whether it is KPAs, KPIs, um, anything attainable or achievable is that you cannot put something that is a pie in the sky. Nobody can, can eat a pie in the sky. It needs to be a pie in a plate. So it is a simple thing. How do you how do you achieve it? I, I was I was consulting um, one one of one of the the global tolling companies, and one of one of the um, the objectives um, or, or the the objectives was was a single word quality. Quality as a word does not provide you with with an objective, and it was it it was on the objectives quality as a word and health and safety as a word. It wasn't saying that health and safety with um, no deaths and no LTIs or something. It was just saying health and safety. That doesn't express anything relevant. Is it relevant on your business? Is it relevant on what you are doing? Is it relevant on your projects? Is it relevant on, on what do you do and what do you want to achieve? And then time bound, it needs to be saying it is every quarter, six months in a year, uh, or in two years, three years, 18 months, it needs to be um, achieving that into, into um, a time period. And if you're looking at the management levels that is on the right-hand side, you can see there that, that on a management level, on the specific, it is serious and shared, measurable, it is motivational and marketable. Uh, we're looking, looking at attainable, it is announced and appealing. We're looking at relevant, it is real-time and not reactive. Um, it must be proactive and then time bound it is telling and tiered that that you are working with so operational objectives if you're looking at operational objectives in in um, in business operational objectives and i i just want to in my in my background studies i have always learned 
that there was these strategic objectives, these tactical objectives, and then there's operational objectives. So if you're looking at strategic objectives, that is your three to five years. If you're looking at your tactical objectives, that is actually your 18 months to, to your, your three years um, objectives. And then you've got operational objectives. This is where the operator is actually working in your bottling plant. And that guy or that person is looking at what is your, um, your reject? How do you handle your, your enclosures of, let's say, whiskey? Um, that is that is the biggest commodity um, and the critical objective there is how do you measure in that space how do you measure the enclosures or the caps because the cap is actually making making that that bottle is actually legal and that that cap is actually creating for you the the assurance that you are working with um, a quality product. Now, this is where the operational objectives are coming in. This is where you are doing a day-to-day -day thing, a day-to-day -day task. So, so this is your, your simple routine task that you need to do, a checklist. Your checklist that you are aligning, checklist is, is actually, if, you, if you're looking at a checklist, it is actually a fantastic um, risk assessment methodology because you can go and on a strategic level on a tactical level on an operational level you can design a checklist on each one of of these levels and the people that's actually working working on that level let them let them complete the checklist because through asking the questions and listing the questions that you've got in your checklist or for that specific function you can actually um i, I want to say embed the information that that you've got in your in your objectives you can embed that um, in a, a simple checklist where people are actually um, working on the ground i am always intrigued um, if i'm going to a shopping center in and i go to the toilets really um, because when you walk into the into into the toilets i'm not i'm not saying where i am going to but when you're walking into a toilet you are in the the shopping center toilets you are seeing there that there's a checklist for for the company that is actually managing the cleaning of the toilet an hourly checklist is it clean is um, um are there enough soap in 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 the um the dispensers are um uh, the basins clean is everything actually clean there and this is your day-to-day hour-to-hour operational tasks so your key organizational goals can also include employee and management performance, such as the productivity, pr profitability, innovation, market share, and social responsibility goals. Now, very easy. The, on production, what is the production that you've got and that you can actually put out on a daily basis? And how do you count your time? How do you manage your time? Now, if we're looking at, um, at project management goals, in here, and we can speak about PMBOK, we can speak about PRINCE, we can speak about ISO 20, 21500. We can have a specific productivity thing there to say that how long does X, Y, and Z take me in time? So we're looking at time, cost, and quality. What is, what is the time, cost, and quality that we are actually speaking about? And this is within a project, because if, you're, if you've got a quality problem, it is going to impact your time. If you've got a time problem, it is going, and, and you are going to be rushing through um, a production line, you are going to have more rejects, definitely. If you are rushing through, um, as I have explained earlier, I was involved, um, myself, Annie Lien, was involved in the biggest project um, globally, the Gautrain between 2007 and, and 2013. And one of the, the biggest challenges that we had there was, was about the curing of cement because we were casting our, our own cement, uh, um, our own bridges for, for, for the in-beams as well as for the viaducts. And each one of those um, viaduct blocks need to be cured in 30 or 35 days now the moment that 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 is there's an environmental change um, from summer to winter etc that curing process just takes longer and you cannot hurry that because the moment that you are that you are hurrying it that block is going to be where you are giving a guarantee for 30 years that we had to give 
that block is going to be perishing um, within three to three to about five years. So your production, what do you need to put out there? Profitability. You cannot have, you cannot make profit if you don't plan for it. You cannot make profit if you don't look at the small um, monies that that you are losing. If you if you are looking at um, at at every level of your your organization and you are actually looking after the small amounts the big amounts are actually looking after itself because then you are making sure that there's no pilfering that there's no i want to say a crack that money can be can be flowing into that innovation innovation is speaking specifically about continuous improvement innovation is speaking directly to how do i grow my my business innovation is speaking directly to the the thinking of people and what are they keeping themselves busy with while they are thinking are they thinking just to on 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 an an operational level are they thinking of i i am working for two hours then i've got i've got tea time another two hours i've got lunch or are they really thinking about what what they are doing market share what is the market share that you have got and how big of the slice do you have there and that must be measured your social responsibility how do you look after your social responsibility goals because social responsibility is not only a, a giveaway it is embedded in every in every non-profit act um that and your revenue services act globally if you are giving to your social environment um you can deduct it from your taxes but also that is for you big marketing capital because you can use that in every environment now now if you look at at the five basic operational performance objectives we can look at the following firstly i have said to you in project management it is it is um time cost and quality we are looking here at performance objectives that you can go and and write it in a kpa and a kpi to determine what is my quality that I want to give out and how do you actually measure quality? The measurement of quality is your returns, not only your inspections, it is your returns because your returns, whether people can work with it, whether they can, they can read your instructions, whether they can execute what you have actually intended for them um, to, be, to be working with your product, that is in your customer complaints that you need to be looking at the speed how quick can you do something um i have i have spoken earlier about um our management system toolkits we can guarantee you that we can implement a management system in your environment within 18 months instead of of three years if anybody else is is quoting you you three years we can do it in 18 months and and possibly shorter because we have got the experience we've got the documentation already just the documentation development in a management system for for a management system certification will take you up to six months if not longer and it depends how big is your organization so we are saying here that 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 the speed of implementation is a critical goal uh, and a critical objective that you need to be looking at dependability flexibility and cost so all these are actually critical environments that you need to be looking at, at your performance objectives now let's put this in a bit of a practical environment if you're looking at at um at at these objectives you can actually go and go and look now at cost so what is keeping the business operational cost low enough that you can actually determine what is your unit cost what is the contribution per unit what is your labor productivity is the output really what you are looking looking at there secondly quality is it maintaining the product standards across the business and then we're looking at satisfaction ratings we're looking at scrap ratings we're looking at quality initiatives if you're looking at speed speed of response we are looking here at the efficient response to unexpected changes in demand so we are sitting in this COVID space now and there's a huge demand on ppe globally and can and at the moment lead time lead time cannot be guaranteed on any level people can tell you 10 days lead time but there is so many 
variables that is actually involved in this process that you cannot actually determine lead time. Lead time, if you are guaranteeing 10 days, quote 14 days, because lead time is actually dependable on, um, on a transport plan if you are importing. It is dependent on customs to clear it. It is dependent on so many role players. Then your capacity utilization, your HR management, and this is all to do with your speed of, of your response. Flexibility. Flexibility is how can you adapt to, to your customer environment? So business can adapt to meet customer needs through uh, your products, your delivery, your volumes. And as I have mentioned now previously, the PPE is, is, is a very good example there. And then dependability. Dependability means here the target market begins to associate quality with the brand. Now, if you are looking at, at, uh, at brands, um, the oldest brand in the performance vehicles is actually a Golf GTI. Now, if you're looking at the Golf GTI and you and and you and you are giving a new and and you are actually having a choice to buy a new Golf GTI versus the new um, Hyundai um, i30N that is costing exactly the same price, you will not even think of um, the second brand. You will look at the Golf GTI because golf has got a history over 30, 40 years of performance and dependability. So this has to do with your product lifetime, your brand loyalty and your quality assurances. And one that, is, that has been uh, incorporated here with global warming, et cetera, is also your, your environmental targets. So what is your env environmental targets? Are you considering what is your ethical responsibility in terms of your energy consumption, the renewable energy, or your recyclable products. How do you work with this in terms of your of the quality of your products, in terms of your cost of your products, in terms of your the dependability, flexibility, and speed of response? And how can you have the least global footprint on on anything? Um, so, with that, just want to go on. So, I just want to introduce to you. Um, this is, this is our last slide uh, on the objective. So we have addressed um, what is an objective, what is the risk of the objectives. We have addressed strategic objective, um, objectives, um, goals as well, tactical objectives and operational objectives. And if you're looking at, um, at all of these things, we are also, um, Crest has developed the Isolytics GRCNA um, software. Now GRCNA, if people don't, don't know what the abbreviation is. It is actually um, governance, risk, compliance, and assurance. So we have we have built a, a system that is actually pre-populated with with about fourteen ISO standards, and that we are working with GRC. You've got it now. Combined assurance that is the A part of it. We've got I square mass. I square mass is our incident and investigation management system. We're working with a bow tie methodology for risk assessments. We're working with enterprise risk management. We have got the integrated management system um, of, of ISOs pre-populated for you. We've got a mobile system as well on isolytics. We've got checklists. That is a fantastic measurement of your, your objectives and your performance. We've got compliance, surveys, and all of this are actually fueled by machine learning and, and it is based on a platform of artificial intelligence. Now, I just want to go through our membership and endorsements. I'm not going to, to go through everything, but you can see the M size is the ACES International, and this one here in the middle is actually our our biggest and proudest partner, because we are associated in 150 countries, and now that we are working digitally, it is actually fantastic because we are we we are working in Malaysia, we're working in Singapore, we, we're working in Bangkok, we're working in Americas, we're working in Europe. Every place on earth, we are a global company and we are we're doing global work. And I want to I want to ask you, if you um, if you look at the um, uh, the presentation that will be by this afternoon on on YouTube, you will you will see this. Um, 
this is this is a a magazine that has been being printed every two months by the PCB um, and Chris has got on page 60 to 66 we have got a an article in in there about business continuity and risk bearing capacity and and all those things so please go and visit our website um, also go and and look and please go and subscribe to the ISO global assistance um, Facebook page we are assisting you there in every question that you've got uh, in how to get certified on every level within the ISO space. Webinars, we are doing that. You, you are attending in our articles, we are writing it. It is on our media room, brochures and catalogs, podcasts, white papers. We've got fantastic white papers there. And then please go and, and subscribe to our YouTube videos. We've got about 11, 12 um, YouTube um, um, files on, on there. And uh, it is actually speaking about everything that we are doing here. And if you're looking at, um, there's a bonus for attending the webinar. Uh, because you have attended this webinar, please write us an email. Um, I, will, I will give the information afterwards um, because you can get six weeks access to our Isolytics software for free, mahala, gratis. It is, it is there for you to be using and there for you to be actually actually measuring yourself in terms of even if you just measure one clause of the ISO, even if it's just leadership or your, your objectives that is in clause six with your risk assessments. We will give you access to, to this. So please um, apply for us and please look out for the next webinars. Um, we have got every week between 11 and 12, we've got a standard webinar that we are, um, that we are providing to, to our customers. So if there's any questions, um, please attend the webinars and please ask the questions. And I want to thank you for attending this webinar. And this is our contact details. This is mine and Elian's. So please make sure that you are contacting us, calling us, and I'm going to ask Ilya now to um, to give me feedback on if, if there's any any kind of questions that we need to address. Uh, Nikki, no questions on the chat. I did also put um, both our email addresses on the chat. Um, yeah, so if if anybody has questions, the floor is open. Please, anyone. We've got a good attendance. I think we've got 12, 13 people. This is really good. Can I come in? Yes, please. Sure. Pila, my yes. friend from the Civil Aviation Authority. Hi, Pila. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, Nico. Thanks. Excellent, and how are you man. Doing, guys? Excellent. Thank you for attending, Pila. Yeah, what a good presentation. Thank you, man. Thank you. Taking us back, back to school now. <laughs> <laughs> it is always where we have learned the most. Uh, it's a lecture. More than a presentation. <laughs> Thank you, Pila. Thank you. I think uh, uh, the presentation was very clear and informative. Thank you, Pila. Uh, basically, I have no major questions because I think you explained each and every word in the presentation that is there. Uh, you didn't just browse through, but I think you were detailed in explaining everything that was on the slides. But the quick one, uh, yes. I'm more interested in isolytics. I don't know. Ah. That's part of my pronunciation. Isolytics. Yes, ISO analytics. Yes. So it's isolytics. <laughs> ISO analytics. Yes. So you're saying you've been endorsed. Uh, I've seen the companies, uh, yes. including our risks. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, IMSA. Uh, RMS, yeah, IMSA, yeah. IMSA, yes. But I don't see uh, like your Saika, I don't see IIA, IOD, you can mention all the South African kind of, uh, except for the risk one. Yes. Is there any specific reason? No, not actually. Um, Pilar, we, we, um, I am a member of, of the Institute of Directors. Um, I yeah. am, I, uh, we are also as a company, we, we, are, we are members of, um, of IMSA. Um, for us to be to be involved in 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 every institute with the compliance institute with the ethics institute, uh, yeah, I am I am also a member of the global IIA, um, and and uh, um, so so we as a company 
we are working working with those it is not always that that they are giving um uh, endorsement on all the levels that we are working with imsa uh, you can go to their website and you can go and see the under um under training endorsements uh, we are lying lying there on on the on the training endorsements for iso training okay yeah, that's. I think that's the only part that I was more interested. In. Okay, so isolytics, yeah. isolytics, um, uh, Pila. If you if you want to have a um, a demonstration on it, I can. We can do it off offline. Uh, I don't Sorry. want to. I don't want to take um, the the time here on the floor. We can do it offline, and I think you, as a as as a chief audit executive, um, that you that you are, um, you can you can use that in every every company this is actually why we have we've built it because we have seen in the market and you know um the softwares that is out there um that they don't give you a pre-populated iso there is none of that that is existing not in cura not in barn owl not in teammate not in um in any any other system that we have looked at globally so we are the first uh, company that is actually pre-populated now now at the moment 17 standards uh, we will I think by the end of the year we will be on about um, 24 standards and that will include King 4 socks um, it, it will also include J socks um, so every every framework that you that you can have we can put it on our system and you can work from that and this is actually to empower you as consultants um, that the the value added reseller um, agreement that we've got here is actually to empower you because the name of the system is isolytics. It is not Crest, Advisor Africa, it, it is isolytics. So it is, it is a simple, um, there is no company that is registered on isolytics. It can be your system, you can use it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Pleasure, thank you, Pila. It's Any other pleasure. questions? Any other questions? Nope. Uh, doesn't look like there's any more questions. Just a comment from Edmore to say thank you, Nico. It was great. So. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, everybody. Uh, we, yes. Question for me. Okay. Question for me. Mr. Mohadiri. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Quite informative. Um, just uh, advice from you. Uh, yes, sir. For us who. The, the smart, uh, the smart uh, concept. How yes. do we, how do we, me and how do companies get it right? Because you find in most cases uh, uh, our objectives are never that smart. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. To the extent that we can measure and monitor them. How? Is... How? How? What advice can you give? Okay. What I would, what I would say, if, if I'm if I'm looking at at your question, sir, I, I would I would actually have a um, with our strategic sessions that we've got with companies, um, including um, Pila was at one of them. If we are doing um, the SWOT analysis after the SWOT analysis, what we are doing is actually setting down our strategic objective, and then we are actually going to look at at a table format of asking is it specific and then the requirements that is that is there to be specific measurable um, achievable to measure that against what we have documented today and this is how we are we we are brainstorming firstly um, the 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 objectives but then if you if you go through the brainstorming you need to have a guidance and your guidance is usually the smart methodology and if you are cascading that one down to your to to your your departments, they have to be so smart. So then you are you are including the um, another line. Is it linked to your strategic objectives? Very important because they they needs to be they they needs to be that that chain reaction um, methodology that you are using across the development of objectives. It is I cannot um, if you are asking me. To, to give you a full answer within two to three seconds, um, I cannot be, because 
each objective need to be looked at separately and the people that is in the room need to understand that objective because the context understanding the organization and where you want to go to that is critically important and be aligned is it okay mr mohdiri yeah sure we have answered it okay uh, thank you yeah thanks thank you very much any other question If there's no questions, it is now 11.52. I am giving you eight minutes back of your day. We, are, we were contracted between 11 and 12, and now I am so efficient and so time-bound with my smart objectives here that I can give you seven to eight minutes back to you to do something else. Go and grab a coffee. Thank you very much, everyone. We will put it on, on, um, on YouTube and we will communicate to you further for next week. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.